now we continue the next uh, article gauss theorem of electrostatic in that article we explain the statement and proof of the gauss theorem in electrostatic now what is that gauss theorem gauss theorem which gives the relation between the total flux passing through any closed surface and the net charge enclosed within that surface therefore what is its statement that statement we write here the total electric flux through a closed surface is equal to the ratio of the total charge enclosed by that surface to the permittivity of the medium in which these charges are situated or in other word we also give the statement as the total electric flux through closed surface is 1 by epsilon 0 times the net charge enclosed by the closed surface mathematically that relation we write here the electric flux phi e must be equal to for a closed surface we write the integral of vector e dot ds that electric flux must be equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times the net charge enclosed by a closed surface this statement we prove here for that purpose we considering a closed surface in a free space that closed surface which encloses the number of charges such as q1 q2 q3 up to qn and the total electric flux for these charges we calculate by considering a closed surface for simplicity we select a small surface element which is at the point p that point p is separated by the distance r from a point charge plus q at the point o hence from the geometry of that figure we note what is op that op is a distance between the two charges q and q0 and the electric lines of force which is along the direction of electric field the normal drawn to that small surface which makes angle theta with the electric field direction then initially we find what is the electric field at the point p now how we find the electric field that we discussed earlier electric field we define it is the ratio of force per unit charge which charge we take test charge which is separated by the distance r from the source charge that is o at the point o now what is the force exerted by the test charge that we calculate by using the coulomb's law f is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 q into q0 divided by r square if force is known then we find electric field intensity 
e equal to q divided f divided by q0 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 cancel and we get e is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q divided by r square this is the magnitude of electric field at the point p or in terms of vector vector e is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q divided by r square into unit vector r if the electric field intensity is known then we find what is the electric flux passing through the small surface area element that is ds that electric flux is d phi of e is equal to the dot product of the two vector vector e dot vector ds both are vectors simplify the dot product we get e cos theta ds say this is the equation number 2 electric field magnitude is given by the equation 1 that term we substitute here 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q divided by r square into cos theta ds hence we separate d ds cos theta divided by r square and we rewrite the equation d phi of e equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 into cos theta ds divided by r square now what is the bracketed term represent bracketed term gives the solid angle subtended by the small surface element at the point o that solid angle is we know it is measured in steradian hence for small element ds that solid angle is d omega that d omega is d cos theta divided by r square hence simplify in terms of solid angle we get the equation 3 d phi of e is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 d omega that d omega we define earlier it is a solid angle subtended by the small surface element at the point o if for small surface element ds the electric flux is known then we calculate for all other surface elements those are enclosed in that closed surface it means that surface element having the charges just like q1 q2 q3 q4 and so on then what is the total flux passing through the entire closed surface that we calculate by taking the integration on both sides and if given surface is a closed region hence we write closed integral of d phi of e is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 into integral d omega that solid angle subtended by each small element is 4 pi if we this is the total solid angle subtended by the closed surface that is 4 pi hence phi of e is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 into 4 pi 4 pi 4 pi cancel to the numerator and denominator and we get the term phi of e is equal to q divided by epsilon 0 and that is the proof of gauss theorem of electrostatic what it shows here the net electric flux passing through closed surface must be equal to 1 divided by epsilon 0 times net charge enclosed by the closed surface now if suppose the charge is outside the closed surface then what is the net flux through the closed surface since no any charge is inside the closed surface the charge are outside here then how we find 
the net flux it is zero since no charges are encloses inside the closed surface hence the net flux or the outside charge to be zero now instead of free space if the medium is dielectric medium and in that dielectric medium the charges are enclosed in a closed surface means that medium has constant permit it permittivity its epsilon then net flux in the dielectric medium gives the relation phi equal to q divided by epsilon k is the constant of the dielectric medium that k is it is the ratio of epsilon by epsilon 0 means epsilon is equal to k into epsilon 0 hence substitute that value and we get phi equal to q divided by k into epsilon 0 and that is the another relation we express the gauss theorem in the dielectric medium that relation we call relation b in the dielectric medium hence in the free space relation is simply 1 by epsilon 0 times the total charge enclosed by the closed surface in dielectric medium the net electric flux must be 1 upon k epsilon 0 times the total charge enclosed by the closed surface and that is our the today's article thank you